Welcome to five tips for curating content from other Facebook pages. The agenda today is pretty straightforward. We're going to talk about the benefits of curating content from other pages, why you would want to do this in the first place and why it makes sense for your specific nonprofit. And then there are tips that I'm going to share with you. One, we're going to talk about using graph search to find the right pages and posts that you should be sharing to your page using Facebook Insights to source top posts. There's a feature in Insights that will show you top posts from pages that you're following. And creating an interest list, that's another way to see all the top posts from pages that your fans like. And then four, we'll talk about sharing the post, modifying it, scheduling it, saving it as a draft. What do you do with that content once you find it, once you curate it? And then finally, what's the balance between curation, finding stuff from others, and creation, which is creating your own stuff? Okay, and a few thoughts around that, all right? So the benefits of curating content from other pages, uh, basically, it will save you time, all right? So creating content, as you probably already know, it takes a lot of time creating a graphic image, you know, researching an article, writing a really great description that entices people to engage with the content, asking very specific closed questions, that all takes time, right? So curating content is essentially leveraging the success of other pages. Other pages have gone through the work that you don't have to go through and you can take advantage of that. Now, I'm not saying, you know, 100% of the content that you're going to publish is going to be curated, but a good mix of it. And we're going to address that at the very end. Uh, it does save money creating content because obviously you don't have to pay for images or have video created or have someone write copy. Uh, and it's a really great way of engaging your community by sharing content that they already like. So that's what we're going to start off with is uh, finding out what content do our fans already like. All right. And the, the last uh, benefit of, of curation is really it makes you look like the hero. It makes you look like, wow, they're really cool. They're not so tight and um, controlling. They're willing to share content from another animal shelter or another art museum or, uh, you know, their partners. So there, there's this element of generosity to it. And there's also you know, reciprocity. So if you share content from other pages, they're going to be more likely to turn around and return the favor, you know, depending upon the relationship, right? So let's get into these tips now. The first one is to use Facebook Graph to find top pages and posts that your fans like, all right? Uh, so Graph Search, which is a default search feature in Facebook, you literally just log in as yourself, not, you know, yourself, the person, not your page, but log in as yourself, go to facebook.com, and you start typing in a, a search strings. And I'm going to show you a couple of examples in just a moment. But the benefit of graph search is that uh, it, it allows you to do quick research on your current Facebook fans. You're going to be able to find popular pages, interests, and even groups that they belong to. Uh, and again, this is a great source of pages and groups and, and interests that will have content that your fans already like. All right, so basically these are pages, the top popular pages among your page's fan base. Why not go through that and use that as a base for content that will uh, likely engage your Facebook fans, right? Uh, so graph search, uh, here's an example right here. Places liked by women who like Mass Audubon, right? So these are places. These are a type of Facebook page that's attached to a location, OK, uh, so some examples of these uh, search queries, favorite interests of people who like your organization. You just replace the brackets with your the name of your Facebook page. And the way this works, by the way, uh, all you have to do is just start typing these phrases, you know, like I did right here. Posts liked by women who like and then you start typing the name of your Facebook page. And the graph search, you'll see a, a suggested um, result. You'll see several suggested results, and you pick the one that's going to match what you want. Okay, so you'll see you'll see it just shows up automatically. Uh, favorite interests of people who like your organization. You could do by uh, groups joined by women. By the way, you don't have to do just people. You could do people, women, men. Uh, pages like by women. 
um, who like your organization, posts liked by people who like your page. So these are the Facebook posts, the public ones that your fans have liked. What are the most popular ones and the most recent posts that, that they've liked? And are those in line with your organization? Are there, is there any really great content that's, that's kind of staring you right in the face? Yes, this is the similar topic to your cause or a related topic, and it's highly engaging, right? Uh, and so you can, you can play around with these search queries. Uh, the other thing you want to do is you want to use Facebook Insights, okay? So once you go and you do your graph search, you're going to find the most popular pages among your fan base. Now, what you want to do is you want to filter that a little bit and look at pages that are very similar to yours. In other words, the content that they're publishing is uh, similar to your page. Um, they're dealing, if you're a, an animal shelter, it might be an animal shelter or maybe a local pet store that has really great how-to articles. And what do you know, your fans, a lot of your fans like that page, chances are that content's really gonna work for your audience because many of your fans have already liked the page, right? So what you do is once you find those pages, you can add them to Facebook Insights. Now there's a report called Top Posts from Pages You Watch right? Now, pages you watch, this is like a broad category. You can watch pages that you see as competitors. You can watch pages that you see as peers, as partners, as, you know, uh, kind of mentor organizations. You know, these are organizations that are really, really engaging their fans in a really unique and creative way. We want to learn from them. We want to learn from them. So we're going to take these and we're going to add these pages to our insights. And to get to this report, by the way, you click on, you go to your page, you click on insights, you click on posts, and then right under posts, you're going to see top posts from pages you watch. If that's empty, you click on the add pages button, all right? And so what uh, in, uh, Facebook insights will show you is uh, basically when you add these pages, you will soon start seeing the top posts from these pages for the past seven days, right? So Based, based on engagement, based on the number of likes, comments, and shares on these posts, this is a great source of content for you, right? Let me just modify this a little bit. Sorry. There we go. Uh, so what you do is once you find these posts, you know, every now and then, every day or so, you can go through here and look at these posts. Wow. Is this a great, are these great articles? Is this something that might be applicable to our fan base? Is this something that, that would resonate with them? You know, depending upon the topic and what you know about your fan base, you simply click on the link, a window opens up and you can share the post or modify it and make it your own. And I'll talk about that in a second. Okay. Uh, the other thing you could do to save a lot of time with curating content is creating an interest list of top pages, right? Now to create an interest list, uh, basically interest lists, first of all, are hand curated lists of people or pages. Right? This isn't a feature that Facebook really promotes a lot, so it's really hard to find where this feature is. But if you go to facebook.com forward slash bookmarks forward slash interests, you'll be able to add an, your own interest and you can create an interest uh, list. Uh, and what you'll end up with in the end, these are just a few of the interest lists that I have. right? Uh, but what you'll end up with is you'll end up with a list of the most recent posts from all the pages that you've added to this list, right? So what I've done is I've gone and I've done my homework using graph search, right? I've used graph search. I've done a little bit of homework and I have created a ha hand picked pages from those graph searches, you know, the most popular pages among my fan base. And I'm taking those pages and I'm manually adding them to this interest list. It's very easy to do. Um, and I've ended up with pages liked by people who like my page, uh, my pages, because a couple different Facebook pages. And when I click on this uh, interest list in my, um, uh, you know, when I go to facebook.com underneath my name on the left hand sidebar, I have favorites, you know, my list of favorite links and locations and whatnot on Facebook, pages, groups, and all that. Uh, a couple of my favorites are interest lists. So I can click on this and instantly I see a list of content 
literally a stream of content from all the pages, or not all the pages, but the top most popular, most relevant pages among my fan base, okay? Uh, and the great thing about interest list, last thing I just want to say is that uh, they can be public or private, right? So in this case, in our example, we're talking about curation, about finding and creating a great list of pages that are producing great content, okay? And again, it all starts with doing that graph search, finding out what your fans like, and then manually creating this list. It's super, super quick to create these lists. Uh, you just basically have to enter the list name and then you pick how public it is, if friends want to see it, only me. In this case, I'm saying only me. And then we simply click on share or create and the list is done and it, we can add it to our to our favorites, you know, on the left hand side. OK, now let's talk about modifying or sharing or scheduling or curating, you know, this all this content that we're finding. Right. So let's say we find a post. Right. And we can simply click on share. We can do that. No problem at all. We click on share. A new window opens up. And as we see in the screenshot, we want to select on a page you manage. This is really important. If you pick, if you just share it outright, it's going to share it to your personal timeline, to your personal Facebook friends, right? And we don't want that. We don't want to do that. We want to share this post on our Facebook page or one of our Facebook pages. So we simply click on, on a page you manage, click on that, select your Facebook page, and then you also select posting as. So you want to post it on your Facebook page, but you also want to post as your Facebook page. And you simply write in your own little description. Uh, I've added a hashtag here and I'm tagging the source, right? I'm tagging the source of the page. They'll get a mention, they'll get a notification about that in their uh, uh, notifications feed and that will signal them, hey, John just shared a post from our page, that's pretty cool. Maybe we might wanna you know, share one of his posts. You know, Maybe not, I'm not gonna keep my, my hopes up about that, and you shouldn't either, by the way, but you should tag the page, um, and, uh, and then you just click on share, right? But you don't wanna limit your activities to sharing because the downside with sharing outright, like I said right here, is that you can't schedule it, you can't create a draft, and you can't really make it your own. If you want to make it your own, you want to take the next step. And the next step is to do a little bit of research, you know, visit that original article or piece of content that that page is sharing, read the article, uh, grab an image from it. In this case, what I've done is I've gone to this article that they shared, okay? So this is the ultimate list of content marketing tools or whatever they called it. I go to that page, and I change the title a little bit. I just say ultimate list of content marketing tools, full article here. Here's the link to that article that they shared. And I'm sharing this massive mind map that was inside that article, right? It's a massive, huge mind map. So that's what I'm doing. I'm sharing a photo, okay? And on top of that, what I can do is I can schedule the post. I can either schedule it. I can save it as a draft. I can backdate it. I might not want to backdate it but I can definitely schedule it and save it as a draft. And all of that goes into my posts um, uh, menu on my Facebook page, okay? So the last topic here is seeking the balance between creation and curation. And I have three, um, I guess, thoughts about that, right? So your content that you publish that's yours, the goal in many ways should be to drive traffic to your website. So what I'm really talking about is if you have a blog, that is what you wanna be doing. You wanna be publishing blog posts and sharing that on Facebook because that's gonna drive traffic back to your website. That's what you want, okay? Um, it's also great to create posts on your Facebook page and uh, share links from other sources and so forth, and that's, that's all fine and good. But the real benefit of creation is that you can uh, drive website traffic to your own uh, webs, you know, drive traffic to your own website a little bit more effectively, okay? Now, uh, shared content, if you're doing this whole thing about curation, your goal should really be to just be useful and engage the fans and that's it because the cost of acquisition is pretty low, right? The cost of getting that content and sharing it is super low. So um, 
the uh, you know the goal is really to engage the the community. You know, so in other words, you can find your own mix. So uh, some organizations say, great, we do 80% curation. We basically find stuff. And 80% of the stuff we post on our Facebook page is stuff that we found. These are found objects or found posts or whatever that we're sharing on our page. And then 20% of our stuff is our own stuff, really designed to drive people to our website. Okay, so the mix really depends upon your goals, your resources, if you have a blog, if you don't have a blog, and other considerations. Um, so seek the balance. And that is it. So I'm going to open it up for Q&A and I'm going to jump over to GoToWebinar and look and see if we have comments, questions, or even tips. That would be awesome.